we're going to be making some guacamole and some pico de gallo. It's one of my favourite afternoon snacks and it goes really well with nachos, chicken, beef, fajitas, whatever you've got and who else really needs a reason to eat avocados? Well, today the avocado's absolutely full of vitamin E, which really helps you to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So absolutely, you thank you. So really, there's a, a lot of different ways that people make guacamole, but I'm gonna show you my favorite, and it's the easiest way that I know how. Cut through your avocado. You keep the seed, okay? That's actually a really important part of guacamole. And before we go any further, what I'm going to do is just cut a little bit of, of garlic off the end, and I mean a little bit, because I don't want it to overpower the guacamole. I want it to be in the background of, as flavor. We're gonna put it in our mortar and pestle. And all I wanna do is I just wanna smash so I can get all the oil out of the, out of the, the garlic. So I, I don't want to see big pieces, big chunks of it there. I just want that oil to be released. Now it's there, the, the mortar's looking all uh, greasy, and that's exactly what I want. So now I'm just going to score my avocado like a checkerboard. Okay, do you want to do that one, Brett? Score that one for me. Okay, so now what we're going to do is when it's scored, it's really nice and soft. And all I want to do now is I just want to squeeze it out into my bowl. And you can do this in any type of bowl. You don't have to have uh, mortar and pestle. Just looks a bit more authentic, that's all. All right. It's all off. And the reason I do it this way is because for guacamole, it's meant to be a smooth, chunky salsa. It's not meant to just be really soft and runny, or it's not meant to be just full of chunks. It's meant to be a really nice combination of the two. So this way, you get it out, and you also have it in chunks and in smooth bits. Now we want to put some flavor into our, uh, the avocado. Now we want to put some flavor in. And so what we do is we cut up some onion, some red onion. Some white salad onion is just as good. We're gonna dice it up. You don't want the onion to overpower your guacamole, so you really want it in small, really fine small chunks. You just go slowly and you'll get exactly what you're aiming for. Now for that, for one whole, guacamole, one whole avocado, I've only used like a quarter of an onion, so don't go overboard with the onion. The tomato, we want nice chunks of uh, tomato, so what we're going to do is cut it in half and in quarters again, and so we remove the seeds. We just want to follow the tip of your knife around the seed bed to remove it. Okay, so the seeds are out and you've got that really nice fleshy skin, and we're just going to do the same. We're going to try, make it into a checkerboard. Long ways, turn it around, and we're going to dice that tomato up. So I usually put about half a tomato in when I'm making the guacamole. All right. Now, Brett, can I get you to just rip over some, yeah. some coriander leaves? Now you can leave your guacamole just like that before you're mixing or you can add it up with some, um, some really nice fresh jalapenos or you can also use the pickled jalapenos, whatever you, is available to you. I love hot food. Brett, however, is not much not of a, a fan. fan. So what I always do is I like to taste how hot my, guac my uh, jalapenos are. If they're really hot, then you're going to know straight away because the pith inside is actually the hottest part. So what I, would you like to try it for me? No. no. We'll just have a little quick taste. No, it's really not that bad. See? It's fine, he just likes to do that. He just likes to exaggerate. It's not really. So what you want to do is just take the seeds out because no one really wants a chunk to bite on the seeds. And then again, if it is a really hot jalapeno, then what you want to do is cut it really small so you don't get these big massive chunks of hot uh, heat burning your mouth. Or if you're like me, you, you will leave it like that. It's entirely up to you. So we just dice our jalapeno. Or you can make it really chunky. It really doesn't depend. It really depends on how you like it. 
but that pop of green goes in the top there. And with our coriander leaves, again, I like to leave it really nice and chunky because it adds to the dish. All right, on top, and a good pinch of salt. And we use salt because it brings all the flavors together. And then we're going to have a nice squeeze of lime on top. And once all our ingredients are in, then we're going to just fold it around and turn it into the guacamole we all love. All right, where does my, here we go. Crunch it in. All that color is just really vibrant and fresh. You can't help but love it. Now keeping that stone in there, the center stone, it actually makes the uh, avocado hold its color. So you can make this three or four hours before you need it and having the stone in there, it actually keeps it looking really lively and delicious. All right. That is our guacamole made. Now to go with our guacamole, we need some pico de gallo because we're going to make some little nacho plate up. What do you think? So if you want to put some corn chips and we'll just do a little bit of cheese on the, on the uh, nachos, on the corn chips. And our pico de gallo, you can serve it as is. It's a lot of uh, knife skills in here, so if you need to practice, it's a great dish to practice on. Again, we get rid of all our seeds from our tomato. Just grab one more. The tomato, fresh tomato is one of the main ingredients of this dish. All right, so we've just, we've done about one and a half tomatoes. And it really is a good, uh, a good little recipe to practice your knife skills on. You can throw all that into a nice tomato sauce later on. But again, we want to keep some nice dice work action happening. Turn it around. And it really does help if you have a very sharp knife. Otherwise, you could be dicing and slicing really ugly pieces of tomato. OK. And again, we're going to be using some uh, jalapeno for this. This is a, a traditionally uh, pico de gallo is that really fresh, zesty salsa that you add to your slow cooked meats that um, you sit around, you eat, put in your tortillas and so forth. So there are a lot of uh, similar ingredients that, that go into the guacamole. But because it's raw and it doesn't have that smooth avocado flavor, uh, it really does turn into a whole different dish. Use the rest of this. All right, so that's just about ready. Can you put some cheese on yeah. the, the chips? Well, this one, I like to leave my jalapeno a little bit chunky because I actually want to really taste that heat in it. Oops. All right, we'll just grab a bowl. We put all of these ingredients into a bowl to mix it. Now with the coriander, we also use fresh coriander. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the stem of it. Now in the stem of coriander, that's where a lot of flavor is. And most people throw it away. They just want the, the really green leaves. But what I want is all that lovely flavor that's in the stem of the coriander. It's very gentle, but it adds a really good punch to your dish. So just slice that really fine. You can really smell it coming out now. In it goes. And we'll just use some more lime juice in there. Actually, it's lots of lime for pico de gallo. And you can't forget the salt. Can you put some salt in there for it? The salt will bring it all together in a beautiful flavor. There we go. All right, so we just fold that in. And 
And once that's all mixed through, we'll just sprinkle it on top of our nachos. And we'll pop that in the oven. Once the cheese melts, we'll serve it with the beautiful guacamole. Okay, so we've just pulled our nachos out of the oven. They smell fantastic. And all you want to do now is just before you serve it, to make it look even more fabulous, we'll just put a nice dollop of our guacamole on top and you're good to go. Your 15 minute meal. Dig in.